All right, G7s, we're going to be talking about water pollution and looking at the bigger question of what are the issues relating to water pollution. This first section is only going to talk about why is water important, and in the second part of the second video, we will look at the actual sources of pollution. So what is one of the issues? We look at the Earth and we see it's covered in water. In fact, 75% of the Earth is covered by water. So how is water actually an issue? Why are we concerned about it? Um, and we, we might ask that, why is water a scarce resource? That word scarce means that there's not a lot of it, that people don't get enough and and they have to fight for it sometimes and look for it, and many people don't have enough. How is that possible if 75% of the earth is covered by water? Why is water scarce? Well, the real issue uh, that we first want to talk about is that only 3% of water is drinkable or fresh water. Sometimes in the reading you might see it actually called potable, and that also is just a scientific word that means drinkable. Reminder, don't forget to pause if you need to and write down these notes. I'm going to talk through them probably quicker than you can write, so you might need to pause and rewind. But we're getting ready to now move on. All right, 3% of the earth is covered uh, with fresh water, drinkable water of all that water. Where does that come from? Where is that water located? Well, the first major source of fresh water is actually the ice caps and the glaciers at the poles. And that is about 79% of fresh water on Earth. That is a large part of Earth's fresh water, which is already a small amount. And uh, unless you're a penguin, you probably are not going to be using ice as a main source of fresh drinking water. So the largest part of fresh water is actually hard for us to use. Well, maybe the second part's a little better. Uh, the second largest source of fresh water is actually water that's underground, and that accounts for about 20% of the fresh water. Now, water underground is not always easy to get to. We can dig wells to get to that water, um, but that requires quite a bit of work. It's not always easy, and it's sometimes hard to find where to dig the wells. Um, so that 20% is a little hard. And there are a few different ways to get water from underground, from a simple hole dug in the ground all the way up to drilling for water. And what we find is that the more we use the water, often the deeper we have to go and the harder and harder it gets to access that water. The final source of drinkable fresh water is rivers and lakes, but if you've been doing your math, you'll know that there's only 1% of fresh water, really, that is left uh, in rivers and lakes. And this is the main source of humans drinking water, coming from rivers, coming from lakes. And you might think that, yeah, there's a lot of water in rivers or a lot of water in lakes. Well, uh, if we look at a breakdown, of all the water at the top, that's a representation of all the water in the world. And there's only a little tiny bit that's fresh water, that 3% slice. And if we took that and we poured it out into the second circle, we would see that that represents all the fresh water. But of all the fresh water, there's only again another 1% little slice that's easy to access. Most of that's in the ice caps and in gr underground. So in that very bottom pan, we have the, the breakdown, and about 50% of the water is in lakes, but about 40% is in soil moisture. You'd have to actually dig up the earth and squeeze water out of it to, to get it to drink, and we probably don't want to do that. Only 1% is in rivers. Okay? So a very small percent is in the rivers that we're going to be studying. And we'll find later that they actually are a pretty big source of people's drinking water. So there's not as much fresh water in rivers as we might think. Here's a different way to, uh, to look at it. Um, you might want to pause this or you might actually uh, want to 
maybe Google search for this. You can search for water distribution on Google and you'll probably find some other maps like this. Um, but uh, we'll talk more about these in class. Okay. Well.